Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Being that it is now 6 p.m., I'll call to order the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, November 19th, 2018. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is the tax classification hearing with Town Assessor Mark Becker. Since it is a public hearing, I'll entertain a motion to open the hearing. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Nogevich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And then myself, yes. The public hearing is now open. Good evening, everybody. Uh, legal notice, Town of Webster, public hearing, tax classification. Board of Selectmen, in coordination with the assessors, will hold a public hearing Monday, November 19th, 2018, at 6 p.m. in the Selectmen's meeting room, second floor. This is in conformity with the provisions of Mass General Law for the purpose of holding a tax classification hearing to establish the relative tax burden to be borne by each class of properties for fiscal 19. All interested parties are invited to attend and participate. Written and oral comments will be accepted from the public prior to and during the meeting. We published the notices in the last two issues of the Webster Times, November 6th and, uh, excuse me, November 9th and November 16th. And in the Monday, uh, November 12th, Telegram and Gazette under the legal notices. Classification, uh, annual hearing. Before the tax rate can be set, the selectmen I'm going to abbreviate some of the uh, verbiage here. We'll hold a public hearing each year to consider the tax rate options available to the municipality under property tax classification. The hearing is held after the assessors have determined final values and all classified all properties reported this information to the DOR. These values set the parameters for the options the municipality may adopt. The assessors shall notify the selectmen and council when the values have been finalized so the hearing can be called. Notice of the hearings must comply with the open meeting law, any local charter or law or ordinances provided. In addition, taxpayers must be notified of the hearing by a comprehensive public information news release of general circulation in the community as well as other appropriate news media. This notice shall appear in the paper within a reasonable time period. The Selectman Town Council shall conduct the classification hearing and vote on the available tax rate options. The vote may be taken at the hearing or at a later date. The assessors provide the Selectman with information necessary to make classification decisions. This information should show the impact on the tax rate of the available tax policy options. The assessors are not required to make recommendations, although they may choose to do so. Municipalities have several options in distributing the tax levy among taxpayers under property tax classification. Use of these options result in multiple tax rates for different property classes because they change the components used to calculate the rate. The amount of the tax levy being paid by or assessed valuation of the class. The total tax levy remains the same. Municipalities must decide whether to class all property, all class, no, to tax all classes of property at their full and fair valuation share of the tax levy, which results in a single tax rate, or to reduce the share of the levy paid by the resident open space owners and shift those taxes to the commercial industrial tax base, which results in a split rate. Page three is basically a comparison from last year to this year. Uh, on page three in the upper right hand corner is our residential breakdown. Single families went up or are going up 5.6%. Condominiums as an average 3%. Uh, miscellaneous properties will skip over. Two families are going up the most out of all the uh, property classes this year. Uh, we had a lag in sales and the sales basically just popped and went through the roof in the last year. 
three families up by 6%. The 10% move on apartments are units of nine or more. Our larger complexes in town uh, are gonna go up at about 10%. Uh, the next page is basically the components of the different classes of property. As an average, residential property is going up 6%, commercial 2.8, industrial 3.5, personal property 5, and as a community, we went up basically 5.6%. Uh, when we take a look at our fiscal 18 versus our fiscal 19, property values have risen $85 million, or just under 6%, from 1 million, 1 billion 525 to 1.61 billion. Uh, page four is a historical breakdown, and it's my favorite sheet that shows basically how we've come to this point over the last 20 years. We always talked about the shift in Webster putting the burden on the businesses and softening the tax rate for the residents. Going back in time 11 years ago, back in 08 was the first time we started to make a move coming off of what was called the 1-6 shift. Over three or four years, we brought it down to a 1.44. Over the last six years, we've narrowed and narrowed. And within the last two or three years, we've come very close to what I would refer to as the single rate. Because of a value increase of almost 6% across the board of the town, it was very easy for me to guesstimate that we would have a reduction in a tax rate of a single rate versus last year. Going into the single rate column, just watching fiscal 16 at 1585, fiscal 17 at 1566, fiscal 18 at 1555, and this year 19 at 1533, the trend has reestablished in our town in the last four or five years where the values have gone up higher than the levy increase. Uh, we always talk about an inverse relationship between values going down and the tax rate going up. That basically happened from 07 straight on through uh, fiscal year 15 when we were uh, digesting that last downturn in the real estate in the economy. Last year, we had what was called a 16 cent differential. Uh, the previous year was 53, and this year we stand on the corner of being able to say single rate. When we take a look at how the components of our tax levy are made up, on the second part of page five, we talk about our fiscal year, our property two and a half increase, and that's basically two and a half percent of the prior year's levy. This year we had another very nice new growth curve of $293,000, uh, which is not as good as some years, but it's gonna be better than what we're going to be experiencing going forward, only because we're actually reaching a point where we're starting to max out on our buildability, if I could say that. Debt exclusions going back five years. The transition between 14 and fiscal 15, we had all of our new debt exclusion projects come on board. And during that time frame, we experienced basically a $1.6 million increase in our debt exclusion from 600,000 to just under 2.2 million. During that time frame, if nothing changed, everybody's tax bill went up or tax rate went up Ten and a half percent across the board if, if everything stayed the same. That was basically our police station coming on board, our, our last uh, come on for the middle school that was finished off over on Park Ave, uh, the beginning parts of the library. Uh, so when we look back into our total levy, our total levy this year is actually 975,000 higher than the previous year's levy. When we talk about debt exclusions, I could go through a short list or a long list of what we're paying for, but I think everybody pretty much knows uh, you know, the dollar amounts. And uh, you know, going into the third or fourth year of some of our newer ones going forward. Breaking on to page six, what we have is our estimated levy, which is last year's levy, the prop two and a half, the new growth, 
and a new calculation on debt exclusions. And then we're taking it and dividing it by the total value of the community. Uh, this being just an exercise in easy math, when we're taking a look at our CIP shift, one means a single rate. Uh, in the past, I would do a shift where we would have like 0.005 and then count up. This year, I thought it was easy just to just give an understanding of where we were. Looking at this particular page six, the third shift down, the 1.050, was very close to what we had as our last year's shift, having that 16, 16 cent differential. So anything further down than that would have been even a walk back in time in the direction the board had been going. So I chose to not even you know, factor all those extra numbers down. Uh, moving, moving forward with the next few years of continued assessment increases, uh, I would have to say barring any major new debt or debt exclusions coming, we should see the tax rate continue to move in a downward motion. Any questions? And this, this is a public hearing. Are there any questions from the audience, members of the audience? I know we have members of the Worcester Chamber of Commerce and the Worcester Dudley yes. Chamber of Commerce here. Sure. And this is the fellow president of the Worcester Dudley Oxford Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I've been coming to these meetings for a number of years and I've been watching the progression here. And uh, on behalf of the chamber, I want to thank Mark for his hard work, the selectmen for going along with it, and Doug also. Uh, it's nice to walk down Main Street in Webster today. It looks like a nice place to start a business, and this is going to be a help. <clears throat> thank you. So I'll make a recommendation that sure. we go with a single tax rate at the projected $15.33 per thousand valuation. I'll put that in the form of a motion. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Other than thank you for that's yeah. the great information. Good work. It's getting easier and easier. This is uh, my 15th year and uh, always a learning curve. And if anybody out in TV land ever wants to come and learn or, or, or listen, I'm always very willing to share. Right, so we have a motion and a second to set the tax rate at fifteen dollars and thirty-three cents. If, if, if I could, Mr. Chairman, yes. right, right, right now we're estimating numbers. That if we would vote to uh, set the tax rate based upon a no shift 1.0 one tax rate rather than the number, oh, it could sure. slide a penny or two either way. Th did you want to? So i my motion. Oh, okay. So if the Motion amended and seconded for a 1.0 shift in the room. Is there any other discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dargavich? Yes. Vice Chairman Beckman? Yes. And then myself? Yes. And at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the public so hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the public hearing. Is there any other discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dargavich, yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And then myself? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Thanks. Next item. This is the fastest one I've ever seen. Oh. <laughs> We've been working up for this a long time. <laughs> yes. So, next item on the agenda is interview and appointment to the Council on Aging, Anna May Malwini. Well, that's just to have a seat. You could just introduce yourself briefly to the board. Uh, my name is Anna Mae Mawinney. I've been a resident in this town for about 34 years. Um, I live in the neighborhood and uh, senior housing. And um, I am uh, the mother of one. And, uh, Do you want to just tell us why you're interested in the Council on Aging? Uh, well, I, I live I live at Stowski Schools, and I just have 
of the needs of the, of the elders and things in this community. So I would just, I was asked to be on the board with the other people, the other neighbors. So I thought it would be a good thing to be involved. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the appointment. Is there any discussion? Thank you for volunteering. Yes, thank you. I'm hearing no other discussion. I'll pull the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dagan? Yes. Then Vice Chairman? Yes. Dagan. Then myself? Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Someone from our office will reach out to you and tell you how to uh, come and get sworn in. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Next item, we have a vote to accept the resignation of Planning Board member Sharon McMahon. So Sharon has been uh, very active on the planning board. We appreciate her service, but she has asked to uh, re to resign. Uh, she is the chairman of the EDC committee, the Economic Development Committee. So she's very active in that still. Motion to accept. Second. So have a motion and a second to accept, accept the resignation of Sharon McMahon from the planning board. Is there any discussion? I would just add with regrets and thanks. Absolutely. Any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Bagevich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And then myself? Yes. Next item is a vote on the appointment of Kathy Cody from an associate member to a full member on the planning board. So uh, I, the planning board's actually meeting oh, tonight, meeting right so. Okay. <laughs> Make a motion to approve. Second. So you have a motion and a second to approve the appointment of Kathy Cody to the planning board as a full-time member. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Bagot? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And myself? Yes. Next item is interview and appointment as an associate member on the planning board for Christella Gonsorsic. If you just want to come on up and just introduce yourself quickly. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Christella Gonsorsic. I've been a resident of the town of Webster for over 30 years. I've raised my children here. I am interested in, you know, helping the planning board. I do have a business here as well. I've had a business here for over 10 years. So I like to be active within the community. I do a lot of community service and whatnot for the town and residents and different businesses, but I want to extend that a little bit more. So that's the pleasure of the board. Motion to accept. Second. Second. So a motion and a second to accept the appointment as Chris Delegate Sorsic as an associate member of the planning board. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Bagevich? Yes. And Vice Chairman Becker yes. and myself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Next item on the agenda is update on the creating a bylaw for the maintenance of private streets for the main town meeting. Kenny, you can join us. Uh, so, actually, ever since I started, Kenny's been talking to me about we need to do something for these private roads. You had a question. Yeah. Your thoughts, should I abstain from? Right no, now? I mean, uh, I think you're okay. Uh, yeah. You're not going to be affected any more or less than anyone else that lives on the road. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, there's a couple of issues. First, uh, legally right now, the town shouldn't be really spending any money on private ways. Uh, that's uh, Mass General Law. They do make some exceptions for snow plows or if you adopt a bylaw that allows you to spend funds on private ways. Uh, so this policy kind of goes through that and allow, would allow us to uh, plow private ways. Uh, and then it talks about temporary uh, minor repairs and temporary major repairs. Uh, and Kenny has this great bylaw, well, I thought it was great, <laughs> that uh, Douglas has used. Uh, and so I send a copy to you, the kind of reformatted 
uh, for Webster. Uh, basically, it would allow a, the abutters of a private way to uh, petition the Board of Selectmen uh, to have the road paved, and then we would put a betterment on all of those property owners uh, to pay for the road to be improved. And how would you do the betterment, like the sewer? Same type, yeah. like foot or whatever. Yeah, per linear foot. Mm -hmm. Uh, so one concern, Kenny's talked to the Douglas superintendent, uh, and when they adopted this, I think townspeople kind of got the idea, of like, oh, now we can start spending town money on private ways. And that's not our intent here. Our intent is to give residents that live on a private way a funding mechanism to allow them to get their road paved. Uh, and there would be a couple different options. One, they could... They could get it paved, but not bring it up to the full town st standard. Uh, then it would still be their road. They would still be responsible for it. Uh, so if it, it broke down later on, they would still need to uh, pay for it to be repaved. Uh, or they could go all the way, have it brought up to town specifications. Then it could, they could take it through the town meeting and planning board process to get it accepted. Right. And then it would be an official town road. Uh, and then any future maintenance would be uh, part of the town. That would, is a lot longer of a process and would be a lot more expensive for the homeowners because they'd have to bring it up to a higher standard with drainage and everything else that our subdivision regulations call for. So if you have 10 people, let's say, living on a private road, yeah, and six of them want to have the road upgraded, what about the other four? So the way it's written is if 50% or more petition and want it, then 100% of the butters would be uh, assessed the betterment. Right. Yeah. Mr. Ben, the only issue there would be is the linear feet. So if those six happen to have 40% of the linear feet, then it would go through. Yeah, yeah. I yeah mean, good, good point. Right. And then uh, just a question is, are we planning on holding any public hearings regarding this bylaw before we look to send it to town meeting for a vote for adoption? I know I've been approached by one of the private associations on one of the, the private roads here in town and they're very interested in getting any type of documentation so that they can understand how it's going to impact their right. res yeah and the there was a the town tried to do something similar to this uh i don't know 07 07 right around 07 yeah. they tried to yeah and some type of the language was just wrong. They okay. called it a policy rather than a bylaw, so then the AG's office wouldn't allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. So this will be, this is slightly different. I think in 07, they said it was a 60% of the linear feet had to uh, petition the Board of Selectmen. This is a straight majority. Uh, but that, I mean, if the board wanted to, that's an easy switch. You know, Mr. Chairman, the yeah. bylaw committee would have a meeting in any event. Okay. So that would be a they public would. meeting, right? right? Yeah, right. So I, I personally, I think this is, this is, of course, a long time coming. I mean, yeah. And it really is helpful for people. I've gotten, as, as you both know, right. numerous calls on private ways. And, and I think it, just spelling it out for people without, you know, maybe Doug or Kenny, you having to explain it 10 different times right. to I mean, different, and, right. you know, different it's a, people. It's, it's something that the state never changed. They have always had that in place to say that you can't kind of use any type of public mm -hmm. funds on this. But we just never had something like some towns have to at least help out. Sometimes I know I heard a lot of it too, where we, we may not be looking to plow or do any of that. That's never been our intention at all. I mean, we're still looking to offer that service. We're just looking to say for the people that maybe live on one of these streets, and you know we got like approximately 27 streets that we need to look at. Some still, that's why some of the language in here, we might have to make an adjustment. Some still belong to a subdivision owner that didn't have one or two of them accepted off of what he had accepted or they had accepted, say, 20 years ago. Some of the other ones are almost, uh, everything gets a street name and a number due to 911 in the Commonwealth. So some of these uh, have one house on. It gets a street name, it gets a number. It's almost like a, a driveway. Mm -hmm. So there's some language and things that we need to look at. I just thought, speaking with Doug and I, that I thought it was a good idea to continue to let you guys kind of know where we're looking to go. This is gonna help 
more than anybody getting scared. This is just going to set the tone where, you know, hey, we can do X, Y, Z, but we can't do A, B, C or something. So I will add, uh, Kenny has been great, and he's been probably illegally <laughs> grading these, yeah, I mean, these roads. Been, right. I mean, some of these streets are from 250 feet mm -hmm. to 1,100 feet. And there's only so much I can do. Some of them are twist and turny, windy type of hill graded gravel roads that, you know, after a month, depending on, especially like this is a great season where the rain has been nonstop since September, it's just not gonna stay. And our neighbors in Douglas experience the same thing. They don't have as many, you know, maybe half, and some of them are in that gravel situation. And as they went through this, now they're kind of having a little bit of a hard time where the material they got to grade and that isn't, isn't working. So there's a little bit of uh, language change that we need to fix to, to help this situation, but in no way at all were we ever looking where some people got nervous that we weren't coming down. Uh, most of the cities and towns do. There are some that don't do them. That is, there are some, but that was never our intention here. Webster with us. Yeah. So no, I know we talked before. And right. what about using that chip stone from the, the when they call the roads? The, the millings. Most right, of the, the millings. Most of the time, Mark, when no. you grunt, because I know you put some of it in part of the right. road. Right. We held up. Right. We right. tried it in numerous areas. You know what I mean? It's held up. There, mine broke here and there. It stayed in some of the areas where the sun hits it, in some areas it didn't. But at the same time, most of the time in today's time, if we're having something done like we had our main street done, that's just part of the contract with the, the paving company. They take everything now, you know? And, and then at the other end of that spectrum, this is what this is gonna help because we can only do so much. We can't, the way it is, we can't just sit there and spend two days on a private road, or roadway. That, that is something that's, it's just not, not written to be that way. Yeah, actually, so the way I have it written now is that we would uh, continue to grade it uh, once in the spring, once in the fall. Uh, I did put a time limit on that. I think it was three years out. Uh, certainly we can, that's up for discussion. If we want to put, push it farther out or continue to do that for these roads that uh, the owners don't want to pay for them, so I guess that would be a one discussion point. I mean, there's, 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 a, there's several over the last three years that uh, similar to what we were just talking about, they got together and they paid it. You know, uh, maybe sometimes it was 100% that participated in helping, and then sometimes there was only half of them, but they still went through and did it. Some of those, if you see them, they're off a lower gore, and they just went forward and did it, they graded it, they put a binder down, and yeah, all the way down, those those in there. Through the chair. Uh, yep. So is the issue really, when they do that, is the issue just drainage? I mean, because yeah. that's some, what some I'm some assuming place. costs a lot of the money. Right. Paving I might mean, be easy. No matter what, yeah. on our end, if it was to come to us, however the process would go, which we're still working on, we would still present that to that neighborhood to say, if it comes to us, we have to do it according to planning board regulations. So uh, I'm just going to throw a crazy number out there. A thousand foot road to be all done according to planning board plans is probably going to be, uh, it can be between 300 and 500,000 for a thousand feet. That same situation, with if you got together, yes, if you got together with your neighbors and with all of us, we all just pitched in. We can just get a quote from three contractors, and you know that's how those other roads get done. And then they just took the best price, and they did it. And it was minimum 20 years out of something like that. So it's kind of still all their property. This gives us the ability to say, hey, in the winter and that, we can come down there and just do it, because that's what we felt was the right thing to do, because we still wanted to help as much as we could. But at the same time, even the insurance part of this for us, if something was to happen to us on a private roadway, you know, there's a, there's a chance the insurance company would look to say, well, your truck 
fuel tank fill, fell out, fell into the brook. The brook went in there. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's, there's those smaller aspects that led up to all of this as I was learning things through these years. You can through through the chair. I think the past practice helps us with that, and I think it's important not to yeah. abandon the people. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little worried about the three years, but that can certainly be amended, you know, when the time comes or looked at by the board at, at that time. Yeah. But it's important not to abandon people. The only other question I had was of the 27 streets. Do we know about how many homes that represents? I I, I, I don't. I'd just be curious. That's I, all. At yeah. some point, if we can figure that out. How many, yeah, that's, how many I, residences are actually affected by these 27 yeah. roads? I know some of the one in my some of the ones in my neighborhood. There's 10, 12, 15 yeah. houses on some of those dirt roads. I mean, I'm just looking. I kind of as I sketched everything together fast. I I would I'd say it'd probably be 400. Yeah, yeah. You can maybe just let yeah, us if you can just let, let Doug know. Yeah. You know. So I did put the draft bylaw as the last article for the warrant. Uh, for the special town meeting more in December. Uh, knowing we are gonna have a discussion, if we felt comfortable with it, we could keep it on there. Um, I don't, Kenny and I have talked, there might be a little language that we wanna adjust, but uh, I, I don't know if you wanna do it now or wait till May. I don't know what, Mr. Chairman, I don't know what kind of adjustment you need. I mean, I'd rather right. see it now, but if there's a lot of adjustment, nothing's gonna get done right. with anyway, roads between right. I now in May. So yeah, I, you think I you mean, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with it. I know Kenny's concern was that the people in Douglas thought that this just opened up the gates for the town to go to take care of all the roads. Um, and, and I think it's pretty clear in here that, you know, the town will not be doing that. It has to be petitioned and, and it has to, and, and there's two different ways to do it. If, if the town is the one that kind of fronts the cost, and then we get the, the betterments over time, uh, that, that money needs to be appropriated first. So that right. would have that's, to wait for a town meeting. Right. So that's like the hard part. If we went all that way and we had one and that road's 450 grand to, to do, then we have to go and get approval. Like yeah, I mean, at that point, if we had a solid betterment in place, we could even borrow it and charge the interest and stuff to the betterment as well. Mr. Chairman, I would say if, if um, Ken and Doug are comfortable, I'm, I'm certainly comfortable suggesting that we do it now. And if you're as comfortable with the language as you can be, if there's some tweaks, make the tweaks. Yeah. I mean, I, I am comfortable. I, do you want to get it some more? <laughs> I, 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 it doesn't have to be I wasn't 100%. That's all. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just wanted to, what does to think. Well, in December. or to, if, if, okay. through the chip. Yes. Uh, if, if you wanted to, uh, just just as a thought, um, if you're not 100%, if you want to find a couple ways to tweak it so that it is 100% or yeah. darn close to it, if you can, would the board feel comfortable with that? And maybe there's something in here we don't know. We don't right. build roads, but uh, right. personally. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's very good, you know what I mean? What we've seen yeah. and what a lot of communities have is that same type mm -hmm. of format. You know, we just had a neighbor next door that did it, and you're just witnessing a little bit of, well, it's gone today, it rains so crazy, you're there, you're there, you're there every day. And it was almost better than before when they had something really small. So they kind of ran into a little problem next door side neighbors. So. You know what we could do? We could approve it as drafted for tonight and then change anything on the floor at town meeting. So suggest you. Yeah, and they'll have a public hearing file. I'll hold a public hearing before town meeting. Yeah, okay. I mean, no, those aren't usually well attended, but yeah, <laughs> it'll be, there will be a public hearing on it. Yeah, and would they do a, um, would it be possible to do a direct mailing to, uh, to the community, the residents that would be affected by this? Uh, it, I, it's possible. Um, and we get all the inventory. Of yeah. Yeah, or, or at least make. Well, once we know that it's available online, we can make sure that they can have access to it that way they know what's yeah. coming down. I mean, uh, Christian, that'd be a better idea, don't you think? What, to do They it? were notified? Yeah, I, th I think it would. Other than have three or four people, and if you have roughly three or four hundred or five hundred or whatever hundred on these 27 uh, so-called private ways, right. 
they can put do some input on it also Absolutely. and what they what what the town is liable or yeah. not liable for correct correct mm -hmm. because I know sometimes we get messages and mm -hmm. people aren't don't maybe don't realize that their road wasn't fully accepted. Oh, yeah, it, and I drive on some of them. They, this is unbelievable. If I lived on here, I'd be going crazy. But then, it's it's your road. It's not the town's right. road. But I think, Mr. Chairman, many people, as we've all probably had these discussions, didn't realize that it's up to them that to take to care of it. It was maybe their developer that didn't right. do it, and they get a cheaper priced house because of it. Mm -hmm. But the town won't do it. What's great is this will identify for those people. Correct. And if we do make some kind of a reaching out to them, we can also give them the policy, which helps yes, explain right. I agree. this well, dynamic yeah. better. So, so yeah, I, I'm fine sending the mail around. It's just, it's gonna be $400 times, whatever, 37 cents, <laughs> so, yeah. which is Kenny, fine. let me ask you this. Yeah. If this, uh, what is the process of raw <laughs> land and someone wants to develop, before they can develop, are they required to upgrade the whole road? If there's like a parcel off of a road, yeah. a private road? I don't believe so. Well, so they could still build, even though it's a private way with no. Uh, I I believe that's how. So it, that's how it is right now. For the yeah, but you can't you can't build a public road off of a private road. So if they right now, if, yeah, if they wanted to do that, you'd have to upgrade the entire public sorry private road to be public if you're building a new subdivision. But most more likely, they're just going to leave it all private. Mm -hmm. A motion right. to approve. Second. So you have a motion and a second to adopt the private roads policy as drafted. Is there any discussion? No, just, just to make it clear, Mr. Chairman, yes. if I may. So that will get mailed out to these, all the individuals and Yeah, so we'll try to. As best we can. To identify them. Yeah, so we'll identify them okay. and I, we'll try to hold that public hearing probably on December 3rd. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, just yes. for clarification, stamps yeah. are first class at 49 cents. 49, not <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bought all those uh, <laughs> Liberty or whatever. <laughs> 37 cents. We can see who mails the mail in his hands. <laughs> yeah. I bought the legacy stamps a long time ago. <laughs> and, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. just on Mr. Bork's motion, um, can we, are we going to do this for the policy and for the recommendation of the bylaw? Or do we need two separate votes, or do we even need so a vote I, for the bylaw? I would include the you don't need a vote for the bylaw because it'll be on the warrant. Good. Okay. So, is there any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, I'll call the board. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dagevich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And then myself? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is review and approve the warrant for the December 10th, 2018, special town So here's the warrant. Um, I sent it out over the weekend, but there was one change. I had to add Article 2. Uh, so the first one is generic, just available for reports. Uh, so when I, I read the invoices wrong when we did the prior year invoices for a sewer previously, there was actually two for fourteen for forty-eight dollars and fifteen cents, and I only had put on one of them. So that's new. Uh, the town hall improvements fund. Uh, if you recall, we get uh, lease payments from the solar farm on the old landfill. That money is used. Uh, goes directly into the town hall stabilization fund. So this would take the money out of the town hall stabilization fund and put in the town hall capital fund. Uh, then article four is funding of debt pay downs. Uh, mentioned this in the past, but uh, this year, uh, originally when we put together the budget, we had, uh, uh, we had assumed that we were gonna go uh, for a short term ban for some of the projects. Uh, Talking with our financial advisor and the new town account, we decided it would be best to go long term on all of them in uh, April. That way it'll be more consistent and actually in the long run it saves us more interest. Uh, so in order to do that though, there's a pay down that we would have to fund this year. Uh, so we would do that by taking leftover money from uh, the, the landfill cleanup account that we created in the May town meeting. So there's about $140,000 left in there. 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next several articles I'll have to deal with uh, retail marijuana. So Article 5 is to impose the 3% sales tax. Article 6 is to amend the general bylaw that we approved at the October town meeting to add retail into the mix so that retailers would have to be licensed by the Board of Selectmen. So Article 7 is to rezone 30 Worcester Road to industrial. That's where the Cure Leaf Cultivation Center is now. Uh, they wanted to change theirs to a research lab or add research laboratory as a use. Uh, and that would only be allowed within an industrial district, so they'd want to change this area to industrial. It was previously industrial. The uses currently are industrial, so I think it could make sense. Article 8 uh, is to create uh, the marijuana research facilities and put them by special permit in the industrial districts. Article 9 uh, is just to add marijuana research facilities in the zoning bylaw for it under special permits. Article 10 is the, well, it's really long. <laughs> so it's all the regulations that would go around uh, a retail marijuana dispensary in town. Uh, so to go over the purposes, uh, essentially it's to mitigate any negative impacts that a marijuana dispensary might have to the neighbors. Uh, the applicability it just cites the, the recreational marijuana law. Uh, it goes through the administration procedure, so this would be a special permit granted by the planning board. Uh, the definitions are basically using what was defined in the law. And section E is uh, the overlay districts that were created uh, based off of the meeting we had a couple of weeks ago. So the uh, parcels up in the the Town Forest Road industrial area, as well as the Kmart Plaza. Uh, okay, so the use regulation, Section F, is the kind of the, uh, the bulk or what we might be interested in. So th whoever this is, they wouldn't be allowed to have off-site deliveries. Uh, there's no on-site consumption. Uh, they couldn't be in a building that currently has residential units. Uh, they cannot have it, they can't have a basic a marijuana food truck. And there are no variances allowed from this section. Uh, section G is the special permit criteria. Uh, go through some of these really quick. Uh, two, we want to make sure that it doesn't have a negative impact on the surrounding community. Uh, three is that it's, uh, there's not paraphernalia that's visible from outside the building. Four uh, is that the uh, the parking areas, the sidewalks, uh, don't have any nuisances uh, created because of the business. Uh, five, there's a security plan that has to be approved by the police department. Uh, six is that there's a traffic plan. This is not a full traffic study, but at least a plan to discuss how the traffic will impact the area. Seven is to uh, keep contact information for emergency personnel. Eight is to make sure the signage applies to the existing sign bylaw. Nine is that all the shipping and receiving areas uh, are secure and it's only for that one area. It's not for uh, a dock that's used by several different, different businesses. Uh, and then 10, it has to have a host agreement from the Board of Selectmen and we're not going to allow a special permit unless they've already complied with all the CCC's uh, regulations. Oh, this is long. <laughs> so, the special permit submission requirements uh, kind of follow the already existing special permit requirements. Uh, like I mentioned before, there is a traffic impact study that's required, uh, and that they need to provide proof that they've met the CCC requirements. Uh, section I, the special permit approval conditions. Uh, these are the things that the planning board will look into when they're issuing the special permits. They want to make sure that the, the noise and the uh, impacts of the traffic are, are taken into account. And that uh, under section two is that they're, they've met the requirements uh, of CCC and our community host agreement. Uh, that also includes a annual inspection from uh, 
the building department and the health office. Section three is the, uh, the special permit has an expiration date is section A, so it's we set it for three years, so they can, if they get a special permit, they can operate for three years, and then they have to come back. So we felt like that was important because uh, we might learn that they're not a good neighbor and we don't want them to be to continue. So after three years, we'd have the ability to pull it from them. Uh, section K is just to double clarify that there's no on-site social consumption. The CCC is still developing regulations regarding that. Uh, and the L is no uh, accessory use for marijuana. And then we have a violation section as well. Any questions on that? It's kind of a lot. Mr. Chairman, just a, a question. How do companies apply for a license? Is it a first come, first serve? If there's only two, do, do they apply after this is approved by town meeting or by attorney general? Yeah, so this uh, town meeting would have to approve this first, and then they have to come before the board of selectmen to enter into a host agreement. So once they enter into a host agreement, then they can apply to CCC for a specific site in town. So, but how would we select them if you know we have obviously a company in town now? If they wanted to, and three others, do we yep. just weigh them all and then I, see who has the best host agreement? What's the Right, so I, I think, yeah, we, before we issue host agreements, we uh, give uh, the opportunity for people to know that we have the availability, uh, and then we will go through a weighing process when we issue the host agreement. So I think that's the step where we narrow it down between the 10 that might be interested and the two that we actually want to take. Okay, thank you. Uh, so in, in relation to this, we, I sent out a letter to all registered uh, marijuana license companies in the state to let them know that this is going to happen. Uh, I, I figure if we are going to have it, we might as well jump on it and get the revenue available from it. Uh, I talked to one today. Their concern was that uh, some of these places, the, the mortgages uh, won't allow a uh, federally banned substance <laughs> to be sold in one of their buildings. Uh, so they had some concerns that within these two areas, uh, none of them would actually be a possibility for a dispensary. Uh, you mentioned Worcester Road. I thought that was one that wouldn't be allowed because it's within uh, 500 feet of a resident, residential uh, area across the street. Yeah, so we so why is we discussed that uh, that night. Uh, right, I thought it didn't make the cut. Yeah, I, when we left. yeah, when we left, my understanding was that it was the, the Goya Industrial Park area and the Kmart Plaza. So I thought Kmart did it. No, it, it was a portion of the plaza that was further back, not closer to. Yeah, so we... Because there was two separate parcels, I think, at the Kmart Plaza that they looked yeah, at. Yeah, in front of the old Shaw's is a strip uh, retail area. That is not part of it, where the... It's a cornerstone bank? Yes. Yeah, so that's not part of it, but the... The old grocery store and the, the Kmart area is. Well, if, if, through the chair, yeah. if I may. Also, just to look at that, uh, going north of the former market, you have a street uh, residential area. I don't know how far it is, but it might be with, within that 500 foot. Yeah, so there actually is not a 500 foot regulation mm -hmm. listed in this, because if there was, yeah, Kmart is not a possibility. Well, we discussed 500 feet during yeah. that meeting. Yeah, we did, and I we pulled it off because that would not that area wouldn't be allowed, and most of the Goya area wouldn't be allowed as well. Uh, we felt comfortable that you know restricting it to just those two parcels on Worcester Street was set back enough. Question. Do want to oh, sorry, I'll uh, keep going through the rest of the articles. Yes, uh, yes Article 11 just creates the new, uh, what do they call it, Recreational Marijuana Retail Sales Overlay District. 
Uh, and then Article 12 is the temporary repairs of private waste that we just discussed. So, Mr. Chairman, just a, one other question on the overlay. We're going to have a map at the town meeting. Yeah, actually. Because yeah. I didn't see anything in here. No, I do have one that I can show you. Just easier to see it. So this is the Goyo site. So this is Town Forest Road. This is Goya Drive. This is where Goya currently is. This is the Marina Place. Uh, this has that medical center on the corner. Mm -hmm. I think this is an auto area. Storage. Storage. Oh, storage place. Oh, okay. And then that's similar. <laughs> and then this is where they have the, I think those green buildings, there's like a trampoline place back there now and uh, some gymnastics areas as well. Mm -hmm. So that's those areas. Oops. And this is the Kmart Plaza. So that's the old grocery store. That's where Kmart is. And then the strip retail right here, as well as over there. So this is where the um, Cornerstone Bank is. So that's not part of it. Like I said. Yeah, the there's houses right there. Yeah. Up to the north of that. That's what I'm talking about. Right? Yep. I mean, through the chair, the, the only good part is those are all stores now, so there are, you know, you can have a liquor store there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at yeah. least people are used to having cars go up there back when there was shots. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why you know, at the joint meeting we like this area because. Easy access, it's not going to cause a lot of traffic for other areas of town. You can get on 395 fairly easily from here. Uh, and there's lots of ample parking already. And um, yeah, and it might save this plaza from <laughs> being completely closed down. Well, again, through the chair, we'll learn a lot more tomorrow when the two open up. Yeah. See what happens. So what is the pleasure of board on I make a motion to support Article 1 through 12. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to second to support Articles 1 through 12 on the special town meeting board. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion. So that we'll, we'll need that motion as well as a motion to approve. Approve the warrant. Yeah. Any other discussion? Here no other discussion. All on board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Degrevich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And myself? Yes. And then is there a motion to approve the warrant? So, so moved. Second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the special town meeting warrant for December 10th, 2018. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Begovich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And myself? Yes. Next item on the agenda review and vote to adopt the complete streets policies in conjunction with the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Thanks. Keeping Kenny busy tonight. Yes. Uh, so, the state has a grant program called Complete Streets. Uh, the purpose of the program is when the town is working on an existing road, uh, doing some work to it, this would be uh, grant funding to add to that project. So, if uh, we were repaving a road and we'd like to add a sidewalk to it, uh, they would provide uh, grant funding for us to do that. What they ask us to do is to adopt a policy that basically says that we will make a good faith effort whenever we look at redoing a road, uh, that we look at making a complete street, which basically means adding alternate uh, mobility uh, options, so pedestrian or bicycles. Yeah. Uh, and there are some exceptions to that uh, in the second page. If there's just not room for it, we don't have to do it. If we decide that it's not necessary or inappropriate because of public safety, if it's just too much money. Uh, so there are, like I said, it's basically a policy that says we'll look at it uh, and we'll make a good faith effort to 
make it a complete street if we are going to be redoing the street. So, uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, just a, so this wouldn't then, with these exemptions, they're broad enough that it wouldn't create kind of an unfunded mandate for ourselves. Which yes, would be that, concern. that's exactly what, well, that's, that was definitely Kenny's concern. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So what is the pleasure of the board? So move. Second. Second so motion and a second to adopt the John Webster Complete Streets Policy dated November. 19th, 2018. Is there any discussion? Uh, just one little question, yes. there, Mr. Chairman. That would also, would it come under like an ADA? Would that be a better right? So, uh, catalyst? For the actually, this is, that's one thing they specifically mentioned, that if you are redoing a road mm -hmm. and there's not ADA uh, handicap ramps, mm -hmm. that they would fund that and... Good. Okay. okay. And, Mr. Chairman, I, I know the committee that's going to be formed had someone from the ADA committee on it that was uh, that was in the policy the, the question that I have didn't relate to um, anything on the safety committee so they wouldn't be involved in this because because uh, I know that they weren't listed as being on the committee I don't know if they should be or not but it doesn't talk about the safety yeah. committee at all I think that's actually a good uh, good one to add this is kind of a standard template that most towns have used, but I, I think that's appropriate. Addition. So we can add them to the to yeah. the complete streets committee. Yep, it's a mouthful. And Mr. Chairman, the only other questions related to there was no mention in here about state roads. You know, 12, 193, yeah. 16. Does that need to be in here at all? Is it kind of like understood? Those are not town controlled, town maintained. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, we kind of leave all that with the gentleman that was with us where he kind of asked us where the mass DOT might have some, if any, in Webster itself. We did bring him up to speed on that. Okay. Yeah. It, so we don't need to. We don't, I don't think it needs to be addressed specifically. That. One thing that he mentioned was that if you adopt this, next time uh, mass DOT is doing a project in town, you can say, look, this is your recommended policy. You should live up to your policy, and you know if you're going to be repaving Thompson Road, you should put sidewalks on it. Right. And again, through the chair, we're, we're going to have something happen at Exit Two, mm -hmm. so Cudworth is a town road. Yeah. Um, and of course, 16 is not. So I'm just that was the unfunded mandate concern I had. If they're going to be touching 16, which they will be, yep. you know, in a couple of years, we don't know how. But what will we have to do? Will there be any mandate that we have to do something on the towns? money for Cudworth Road, or is that kind of taken care of? Well, I yeah. mean, I think that project itself, from what I've seen, is going to tie everything in. As you can see, they just did those now. Some of those right. sidewalks they just did now, right. and they did only in that spot. <laughs> they're not going to kind of take them all, but when, it, when that type of design goes through, whatever they settle on, I know everything will be concrete, which you see, like, the nice walk. That was what they kind of brought us up to speed with what they did now okay. by putting them there. Yeah. So uh, I think this, this plan has been around from Central Mass Planning Regency. I, I think uh, we did visit it in the past. We just, they had a little different guidelines there, which then still, the Doug and I made, it made me nervous because they were looking for a commitment. Really needed to double check on that because sometimes you just you, you can't. Yeah, it, yeah, right. And this was this program's several years old now, and right. at first people weren't signing up because of that very reason that they were worried that they would be you know, held on the hook for doing something. I have no other questions. Any yeah. other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Moore? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dagan? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker yes. and myself. Yes. All right. So the next item is the review and vote on the approval of the Town of Webster Open Space and Recreation Plan. Yep. So if you recall, we got a state grant to to update our Open Space and Recreation Plan, uh, and I'm sure you've read every single word of the 100-page document. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we gave it out to uh, department heads and uh, for comments. Uh, 
Uh, in here, uh, I think Jen included the Conservation Commission's comments. Uh, so I talked to the engineer. He's going to incorporate those into the document. But we would like to have the Board of Selectmen uh, approve the document so that we can go out uh, when we have to receive letters of support, so we need to get those letters of support. Uh, at that point, we can take it to the state, get it on file, and that opens us up to grant opportunities uh, for the state. Uh, one grant that we talked about was the park grant and Actually, the ADA committee has suggested that we look at the Slater Street Park as a potential project to apply for. Uh, because this is so long, yeah. uh, we can uh, approve it at a later meeting, give everyone time to review it. I don't think you want me to go through the and highlight. But no, I, I, Mr. I Chairman, I, I would, you know, uh, yeah, I, I did not get a chance to read all of it. I'm, I'm on page 62 at this point. I know one of the questions I had were how did these goals change from the previous, previous. 10 years yeah. uh, ago? So, so we can put this on our... If we can week. wait. Yeah. Yep, that's perfect. That is not a rush. Moving on, next item on the agenda is review and vote on a policy for committee and a board appointments by the Board of Select. See you, Kenny. Yeah, okay, here. Uh, a couple months ago, we talked about putting together a policy for appointments uh, for both the board and for other committees. Uh, so this is what we <laughs> drafted based off of some other communities. Uh, I, does the board have any questions or comments? I guess the, the question is, what do we do when there's more people apply than positions available, which would be a good problem to have. <laughs> but uh, So this would give the, the board some evaluation factors uh, to base and to interview the candidates off of. No, I, I liked it. I, I think it's important to have it, and it will eliminate some of the questions. We did have some issues, I know, with the health board. Yep. So. This makes it clearer on, uh, on expe what the process expectations. Will be. Yep. Right. Chairman, I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the policy on appointments to boards and committees dated November 19th, 2018. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the board. Selectman Bork? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dargevich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. Myself? Yes. Moving on, next item, review and vote on the update to section 5-6 uh, FMLA leave and section 5-8 leave in the town of Webster personnel policy. So here's the cross out version of it. Uh, so on the 5.6, the uh, FMLA, currently I, the intent wasn't to change it, just to clarify what the language meant. Uh, so right now, if you are on FMLA uh, and there's a holiday, you will not get paid for that holiday unless you've been using your accrued time uh, for the two days before or and after the holiday. So if you had enough sick leave compiled that you could you know, take two months off and you recovered under FMLA, this would let you be paid for those holidays. Uh, and then sick leave on uh, the next page. Uh, employees who are, it used to say off the payroll, we just clarified it and say an unpaid, on, on, unpaid status. Um, so if you are not paid for the month, you're not going to get a sick day for that month. Mm -hmm. right. Motion to accept these changes. Accept these changes. We have a motion to second to accept the changes of sec to section 5 dash Six and section 5-8 eight of the Town of Webster personnel policies. Is there any discussion? Just thank you for being flexible because there was a lot of policies and now that as we're implementing them, it's like, oh, how do we quite interpret that? So it's, it's clear. there might be some more of those in the future. Any other discussion? 
Aaron Miller, the discussion on full board, select the board. Yes. Select the Miller. Yes. Select the yes. Dogevich, Vice Chairman Becker. Yes. And then myself. Yes. Next item, review and discuss the options for signing the annual board issued licenses to be done on December 10th, 2018. Uh, so typically this board has had each member sign each license, uh, which is kind of, uh, it's, it's a lot of signing and it takes a lot of time. Uh, we asked what other communities do. Some of them have a stamp. I don't think that's necessarily what we want to do. Uh, but other boards have voted to authorize the uh, board of selectmen assistant or secretary to sign on behalf of the board. I think that makes sense for the board not to have to sign all of these. Uh, so we wanted to make that available to you. <laughs> uh, again, through the chair, the, the board would just approve the licenses and then yeah. the secretary would sign them. Yep. Correct. Is that the board secretary or... or the secretary to the board. I think the, the board. It would secretary be to the board. board. board of no. <laughs> I didn't know if it was Jen or if it was. Yeah, uh, I mean, my intent was that Jen would Jen do would it. Say. Oh, but but so we could we could make Don do it too. <laughs> I just want a clarification. And, and the, one of the clarifications in here was the board would still sign the that. alcohol licenses mm. just because of the responsibility involved okay. with those. Yeah, I mean, you could go no. either way, but that does make sense. No. Uh, those are a little more. But for everything else, like common ventricular and automobile licenses. Motion to approve. Second. Right, we have a motion to a second. Ventricular, that's in here. Motion to a second to approve the alternate to have options for signing annual license a good rules. Idea. Good idea. Is there any other discussion? Hearing no other discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Bullock? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Margevich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And then myself? Yes. Next item, review and discuss options for the approval of meeting minutes and future meetings. Yeah, so maybe we should hold off well, until Jen's, Jen's here. Okay. Uh, but she had just some thoughts, like maybe she hands it out a week in advance and then you get the comments to her beforehand and that way they're finalized before the meeting. Oh, there's a couple of different options, but we'll let her explain what I think the next will meeting. be easiest yeah, for Yeah, we can her. move that, that item to the next meeting. Then review and vote on the board's meeting schedule for January. 2019 through June 2019. So there's a list of dates, January 14th, February 11th, March 11th, April 8th, May 13th, and June 10th. Those dates all work for me. Uh, so I may be in conflict on June 10th, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. I might have the same conflict. Hold on, thank you. So we have a motion and a second to approve the regular meeting schedule for January 2019 through June 2019. Is there any discussion? Hearing no other discussion, I'll call the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dugavich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And myself? Yes. Next item, review and vote on the release of a housing rehab lien for 36 West Ave. So moved, Mr. Second. Second. Third. Right, so we have a motion and a second to release the rehab lien for 36 West Ave. Let's see, do we need, uh, is there a specific language that has to be in the motion? Uh, yes, so. so it's, uh, to fully release certificate not to encumber recorded with the Re Worcester Registry of Deeds and Book 26603, page 155, dated, dated September 13th, 2011, on property located at 36 West Ave, Webster, Mass. Someone wants to make that so motion. I will. All right, so we have a motion and a second. In the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dugovich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And myself? Yes. Next item is vote on an appointment of 
Michelle Boulay to the Cultural Council. So moved. Second. So we have a motion and a second to appoint Michelle Boulay to the Cultural Council. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the board. Selectman Board? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Dogevich? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And myself? Yes. Next item is a vote on, in, on the appointment of Mark Kanicki to the Cultural Council. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to appoint Mark Kanicki to the Webster Cultural Council. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the boards. Selectman Boer? Yes. Selectman Miller? Yes. Selectman Bergevin? Yes. Vice Chairman Becker? Yes. And myself? Yes. Next item on the agenda is discuss the process for appointing constables to the town of Webster. So a meeting or two ago we uh, declined uh, to make someone a constable because they didn't live in town. Uh, they came into the office and said other towns do let people that are non-residents be constables. Uh, so we asked council, they agreed that there isn't a residency requirement, but uh, talk to Andrew, we want to discuss what do we want our process and policy to be on appointing constables. Yes. We, we, this is, we voted out of comments in the past. Yeah. Yeah, because well, this is one, right? Yes. Yeah, because I did some research online, and I know, like, for example, the city of Worcester mm -hmm. requires right. people looking <laughs> to serve as a constable. <laughs> in the city of Worcester, they have to have been a resident of the city of Worcester for at least five years before applying or requesting appointment. How many const constables do we have today? Three? I think so. And how many are residents? I think the three are. And this person that asked was one of the constables? Uh, I, I thought, I he thought we had one asked. that was not a resident. There was yeah. someone who was voted. Wasn't he from South? Oh, so he, he worked, he worked in something. town. Yeah. Or works in town. Yeah. Uh, one thing that other towns do is that they just require a non-resident to have a letter from the chief of police because they're technically a constable. Uh, so they're somewhat of a law enforcement <laughs> official. Uh, so that could be our policy. Right, because I know the state but guidelines, if it's somebody who's looking for a first time appointment, they're supposed to obtain a letter from the police chief in the community in which they reside. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So to ado adopt a policy that so mirrors state law. Yeah, okay, so we'll. So we can get that drafted and put it on the next agenda. And Mr. Chairman, that would be for an out of town appointment, not just well, for a first, first year. Right. Well, even for a somebody who lived in town that was still looking state, says you can't appoint a constable without having them presenting okay. a letter if, from the. If I may, Mr. Yes. Chairman, I think it's been the practice of the board that when, when we were approached whether they lived in town or not, it was signed usually by the chief or the okay. deputy chief or as a reference point, something of that nature. Hey, my, Mr. Chairman, I, I think I remember yes. the individual had been a constable in this town for a long, long time. I believe so. Yeah. And so he is no longer a constable because it is expired. It expired. So, and but we, we can he's yeah. in he's in this limbo land until yeah. we Okay. So for the next meeting we can put him on to be appointed okay. and okay. adopt the policy. Great. Well, great. Next item on the agenda is the town administrator's report. Okay. I won't go over all of it, but feel free to read it at your leisure. Uh, just to note, Thanksgiving is this week, so we close at noon on Wednesday, uh, and we'll open again on Monday. And then a reminder for everyone that town meeting is December 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, so under public health and safety, we asked Earl Gabor as part of the senior tax workout program to kind of be our eyes and ears on the road to know he'll go out, he'll see uh, nuisance violations. He has a uh, form letter that he gives to the owner and asking them to clean it up. If it's not cleaned up after that, then our uh, Board of Health and Building Office will take it at that point. But I think this is a good step to put someone to work and also have someone out there uh, identifying nuisance properties on our behalf. Uh, he is also out looking for vacant properties. Uh, our vacant property bylaw was approved by the AG's office. Uh, 
Uh, so we're working on a master list. Uh, we've also asked residents to email me if they know of a vacant property. So we want to make that very clear to everyone to help us find all these vacant properties so we can uh, register them and put them in the program. Ms. Chivin, just, just for Doug, um, was one of the properties identified on Lower Lake Street? Because there sure seemed to be one in disrepair there with mm. grass growing and, you know, foot long. Lower that way? Lower Lake Street, just so right towards here. Thompson Road. Oh, that that's lower. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's a lower bar. <laughs> it's <laughs> towards Thompson Road. Okay. So maybe um, a half a dozen houses before right. the Golden Brick. Right. All right. I, I'll... On the right-hand side as you're heading towards... I'll look up the address. Or There's one on Prospect Street there. Mm. No, the wrong Prospect, way yes, on the yes, right that one right side. there. We do have that one. I mentioned that years ago. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of holiday events coming up. So December 1st in the morning is the Holiday Bazaar. That's going to be in Town Hall this year in the auditorium. And that night will be the tree lighting ceremony. That will also be a Town Hall. The tree is going to be on the gazebo. Uh, there's going to be choirs. There's going to be uh, a petting zoo. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Hot chocolate. I know you like petting zoos. So hmm. Santa going to be there? <laughs> there will be a visitor, yes. Uh, and then Winter Wonderland is December 8th. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, if we, if there's volunteers for Santa. More than happy to take those. As long as there's no four year olds watching. <laughs> yeah. An elf? Yeah. Santa's elf. <laughs> uh, Winter Wonderland this year is going to be here at Town Hall rather than at the beach. Uh, we have the nice auditorium that we're going to take advantage of, and I think it also brings life to downtown. Hopefully, it helps some businesses in downtown as well. Uh, under finances, we have the National Grid has an initiative grant that they'll give us money if we help people sign up for their uh, energy efficiency improvements. Uh, so we applied and we're approved for that, and that will be going out. Uh, I think I mentioned this earlier that I reached out to marijuana retailers uh, to let them know that we have a facility here or figure it would be a lot better to get someone who was already running a retail facility somewhere else so that we could see what their track record was. Uh, so we'll see if they, if any of these properties in those two areas is actually viable for uh, a retail facility. Uh, Coming down to G, we're finishing up the last steps for our auditors to close out the year. They're coming in early December, so we should have everything closed out and done by then. Tim's done a great job taking care of all that. And, uh, he's been very busy the last. Well, he's been very busy for the last several months, but he's been here. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Under economic development, we applied for a hundred thousand dollar grant to put in our economic development incentive program. Hopefully that comes through for us. We have, we're working on, uh, we've identified some areas that we think are ideal for uh, chain restaurants and we're trying to get them to uh, bite on those areas. So we sent out a letter to them to try to get them uh, interested. Uh, so we received a grant from the state for two LED signs in town uh, we I emailed people and we talked about having an LED sign in front of Town Hall to, for events and information for town residents. And I was thinking the other one we would put in front of the fire station uh, to get people that are going north and south and also notify people about uh, events at the beach as well. Uh, with that, uh, we're also talking about putting in signs Welcome to Webster Signs at the entrances, and also one across from Price Chopper where most people get off of exit two. Uh, so hopefully between the grant money, we can make all those happen. Mr. Chairman, just a question on the signs. Is it going to be something similar? I, I think Dudley is a great looking Beautiful. sign. Is it going to be Beautiful. similar to that? or as the Yeah, the, the LED portion board? is. So for the one in front of Town Hall, we'll just put it in the holes that are in that brick thing okay, out there. So it'll be right. like the LED like in Dudley? Yeah. Uh, and then the one in uh, in front of the fire station will be, the top portion will be like a carved sign that says fire department in Webster Beach and at the bottom will just be an LED sign like they have uh, 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to miss those big highway signs. Yeah. Yeah, sitting in front of Town Hall. Yeah. Uh, so for the tornado, uh, we also received state money for uh, redevelopment of that area. Just not a lot, but some. Uh, so we have hired an appraiser to look at those properties, and we've talked to the owners, and hopefully we can get them all to agree to sell the same person and make a, uh, a good development down there. Uh, let's give it down to F. Uh, we're working with downtown businesses for improved signage, and uh, also the wine and malt retail alcohol license is for sale from what was the mini mart. So we want to get that out there because if that expires at the end of the year, it probably just goes away because we're uh, over our limit. But I think the the expiration only applies to all year round, all alcohol prices. Oh, not the retail sale? I don't think there's a cap on the retail sale for wine. Okay. Malt, I think it was the cap is for all alcohol oh, year round. Okay. Well, that's good. Then we won't lose one. Uh, under infrastructure, the highway garage roof, uh, if you recall, we were hoping that we could get the, uh, a brand new roof, the metal roof uh, installed, but the bids came back, it was like $450,000, and uh, for around $150,000, we're going to go with the, the rubberized roof, it should last 20 years, which we could put three on for the cost of what? The number. Yeah. Uh, town hall. Uh, we got the auditorium all cleaned out. We had the elections there. It looks nice. Uh, we're working with a group from Nichols to do programming in there. Uh, ideally, they want to open like a movie theater on the weekends and show classic movies, things like that. That would be nice. Uh, trying to get a student entrepreneur group to do that. Uh, and we applied for a grant to uh, restore the auditorium. The, the first phase of the grant would to be have an architect you know, design it, or, uh, and then we would bid it out in the next fund cycle, we could apply for the actual restoration money. Uh, let's see, under E, the underground storage tank at the fire station, that was done, pulled out, it's been repaved. Um, there is some leftover money from the building committee that they're gonna repave the rest of the parking lot in the spring when it's warm. Uh, under five delivery services. Uh, the license renewals will be at our next meeting. Uh, we had over 5,500 voters come before the election day. It was a crazy day, but it seemed to work well. The only issue was you know, people had to park a little ways away. Uh, but I think the, the staff and the clerk's office did a wonderful job getting them through efficiently. Uh, under E, we have two, stu sorry, two staff members that have new babies, so uh, one of them is in the treasurer or collector's office, so everyone else is kind of picking up the slack there. And, uh, and another one is one of our custodians. His wife is having a baby, so uh, if you see me cleaning toilets, it's because we're a little short-handed. Do a good job. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll try. Get uh, your hand in there. That's <laughs> how you really get it clean. <laughs> Under yeah. seven committee openings. I'll read all these in case anyone's watching, but there's two full members for conservation, one full and one associate for the ZBA, one associate for the planning board, one full for council on aging. Uh, recreation is always accepting people. The finance committee has two selectmen appointments. Uh, I, no one's approached me with any interest, but if uh, you know anyone, make the word known. The moderator has four points for the bylaw committee, and the water and sewer commission has four selectmen appointments. Uh, this one we're going to make a concerted effort with the water and sewer departments to get people to sign up. Uh, I think maybe when we initially put it out there, we asked for experience in the field. Uh, I think that might have scared away some candidates. So we'll tone that down and try to re-advertise. Yes, because as of October 30th, 2018, the selectmen no longer have the authority to grant water sewer abatements, nor can we set water sewer rates as is part of the charter that was adopted at the town meeting. 
there yeah. was a, a new water sewer commission was to be created. So if we, uh, I have hope, I, I think we'll be able to get people, but if not, we'll have to change things at the Maytown meeting. Mr. Chairman, just a, one question for Doug on the selectment appointments, the finance committee. That's now the reduced number. Yeah, so we, we only have, have one. Okay, current. But we have a total. Yeah, of three. we appoint three. Or you appoint three. How many? How many um, other openings? There's no other openings. On finance committee. So there's the elected ones. There's I think. I, yeah, I think the, the elected moderator. and the moderator. Are, Those are full. They have the three apiece. Mm -hmm. There's so seven. seven. I, uh, I noticed the lights, they look really nice. The LEDs? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, the, the Christmas, the Christmas ones. ones. Oh. Are you gonna go all the way down to Main Street? So the plan was for those to go on Main Street, mm -hmm. uh, but they stick too far out. Oh. Uh, so we had to put them on Church Street. Uh, so we're putting tinsel on the street lights uh, now. Uh, we're, we'll see how that goes next year, we're gonna buy I want to buy a garland that lights up to put on the street lights. Mm -hmm. fit. All the way down. All the way down. Yeah. About in the town hall, we we'll doing more lights here. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we'll put more lights out front. Uh, we'll put the candles in the windows. We talked about doing the garland on the columns, uh, but we're not sure we're going to be able to pull that off this year because it's really expensive. Well. Mm -hmm. At least we're moving in the right direction as far as Christmas type decorations. Yeah, and there, Carol or more banners to go down Main Street that say "Season's Greetings," so there'll be more of those. So. Motion to accept the town administrator's report. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the town administrator's report. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll pull the board. Selectman Moore. Yes. Selectman Miller. Yes. Selectman Dagevich. Yes. Vice Chairman Becker. Yes. Myself. Yes, next item on the agenda is acceptance of regular session meeting minutes from October 29th. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. So the motion is second to approve the regular session meeting minutes from October 29th, 2018. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'll call the board. Select the board. Yes. Select the Miller. Yes. Select the Vice Chairman Becker. Yes. And myself. Yes. Seeing no other items on the agenda, I'll entertain a motion. So to move, Mr. Chairman, to adjourn. So before you leave, I forgot the oh. signature folder. Oh. So I'll run down and grab it. No. Uh, another thing too, we're gonna yeah. offer everyone a happy, happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and a safe happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, Stay warm. Absolutely. Hope everybody in the audience appreciates <laughs> that. They all do. I can <laughs> count on them. to beat Southbridge. Absolutely. Thanksgiving Day. Oh, we good. I'll be right back. Yep. So we're poll. Yep. So hearing no other discussion and having a motion in a second to adjourn, I'll call the board. Select the board. Yes. Select Miller. Yes. Select McEvans. Yes. Chairman Becker. Yes. And myself. Yes. What's he getting us? Our turkeys? <laughs>